What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're back with part five of the collection video. So this is my 20 plus years of collecting all in, well, I would say one video, but there's quite a few of them. Um, there's a little bit of everything in this collection from vintage OGs to new heat to GRs to a little bit of hype. You name it, you're going to see it in these collection videos. For those of you that are new, this is Vintage Kicks Gallery. Well guys, most of you are gonna be familiar with these, but we have the 2020 New Beginnings 85 Jordan. So this is the first one of the 85 cut that they gave us in 2020. And guys, I absolutely love these. Um, they don't get a whole lot of attention really from the sneakerhead group. I think because the pack was just so limited, people, you know, they, they didn't get it and they moved on. But guys, these are gonna go down, I guarantee it, as a classic in the future. They are hot. So these are based on the Jordan PEs, um, which I don't believe I've ever actually seen a picture of. I think they were in the Last Dance documentary, but I'm not quite sure on that. But they were inspired by the PEs, and guys, they go hard. Jordan brand absolutely nailed it with this pack. These are board lasted. They really got the shape close. If you haven't seen the review of this pack, go back and watch it. It's worth viewing because we go, we give you some close ups, some good information on these that you're not going to see here. And it's worth seeing the whole video. These are that good. So like I said, board lasted. So they're going back to the old way of making things. They have the sample tags in them. They really got a lot of details. Um, this is a promo pair. It was a uh, pre-release seated pair, but uh, I think they're about the same as the pair that actually came came out retail. Um, the only downside is, guys, these go for a shitload of money. And we should probably censor that. Uh, they go for a lot of money. And the pack, I think, is like two grand now, which is quite insane. Uh, is it worth it? To me, yes, because you have that bomb airship. You've got these in there, an incredible box. You know how I feel about boxes. Um, everything that, that you could really want in that pack, this has got it. I just don't know why they weren't more popular. I guess it was really just a really stupid limited release. They released during All-Star Weekend in, well, this year, prior to the Pandy, actually. Feels like a lifetime ago. All right, next up on the list is a non-SB Dunk. These are from 2003 and they're the Curry Dunks. Um, guys, I have a few pairs of these and the reason being is you can pick them up stupid cheap now and I just really, really love these because you can dress them up. I wore these with a, a suit upper one time and um, they, they look decent. Leather quality on them is pretty damn good. They age really well. I think this is probably one of the pairs that I got from Japan. But guys, you can pick these up for under a hundred bucks if you're careful, if you're patient, and if you look in Japan. So uh, what do you guys think of these? I mean, they don't get a whole lot of hype. Not a whole lot of people are gonna recognize them, but I absolutely love them. There's also an Air Max in this colorway as well. Uh, but the dunk to me, that's the one to get. They hold up exceptionally well. Like I said, they age really well and you can put some leather conditioner on them and really, really soak them in there. It kind of gives the leather a blotchy look to it, darkens it a little bit, muy bien. Next up on the list, we have an Air Max from 2009. So we're looking at an Air Max One. Um, I think these are called Grand Safari Purples, but I may have that, that name wrong. Guys, these are stupid rare now. You cannot find them. To me, they're straight gas. I mean, they really kind of throw off vibes of the pink pack, the flamingos, which you know how I love those. Um, not because the colors are similar, just the way the color blocking is. They kind of throw off that same vibe to me. 
they just look incredible. This yellow accent, you know, it kind of reminds me of the APC accents. It just drives me like, I, I love it. And uh, the purple suede on here, good can, you know, overall good quality. I wouldn't say exceptional quality, but good for an Air Max. Um, these won't last forever. So being that these are 11 years old, they probably have about five years left in the soles before they'll have to be swapped. Luckily, it's a pretty basic, you know, that's a pretty basic sole. You'll be able to find a replacement for them. If you can find these for, I would say my threshold would be 250 bucks. So if you can find these for 250 bucks or less, I do recommend them. But last I checked on StockX, only a couple sizes were available and the prices were all over the map. I don't know why people think that these things are worth so much. They really aren't. But I'm curious what you guys think of these because, I mean, to me, it doesn't get a whole lot better. I know they're purple shoes, but you know, what's wrong with that? They, they you know, they're an accent. They look pretty damn good. So I was tempted in the beginning to do a lace swap on these. I know I need to put a shoe tree in these, straighten them out. But uh, anyway, I was thinking about doing a lace swap, but then I thought about it. I'm actually gonna do the aglets for these laces in yellow to kind of make them pop, leave them hang out. I think it'll be a good look. So take a look, let me know what you think. To me, these are probably a top, I'll say top 15 Air Max of all time. Yeah, I like them that much. You guys probably recognize this box, so you might be saying it's a little small. That's because there's not an Air Jordan in this box. There is a Sky Jordan. That's right. These are 1985 Sky Jordan Chicago's. And uh, guys, you know, obviously these don't fit me. The Sky Jordan was the, what you would call the grade school sizes uh, for the Air Jordan in 1985. I've got a couple pairs of these and I actually did a whole video on the Sky Jordans that kind of explains what they are because you say Sky Jordan, not a lot of people are going to really know what you're talking about. But it's kind of cool because after I made that video, a lady reached out to me and she said, hey, I have that pair of shoes that's in your video. She sends me a picture from 1985 of her wearing this exact pair. We were able to come to an agreement on a price. I bought them, all they needed really was a cleanup, a little bit of touch up here and there, but I actually did that on a live restoration and they're absolutely incredible now. Probably the best condition, well, they are the best condition in my collection as far as the Sky Jordan, but these outside dead stock are probably one of the top three I've ever seen condition wise. They're really, really solid. As you can see, you know, there's not a whole lot of wear on them. Um, I think these are size like five and a half, maybe six, something, well, I should just look. They're size five and a half. Um, so that would be a women's seven, maybe a women's six and a half now, depending. So I'm curious, the, the female sneakerheads, if we have any that watch this channel, what would you guys pay for these? No, I'm just kidding, they're not for sale. They won't be for sale. Uh, these are definitely gonna be a permanent part of the collection and you know, I don't think I'll ever really get a chance to get a pair quite this nice again. These, for whatever reason, just do not age that well. I don't know what it is about them, but the soles seem to harden up on these a lot easier than a regular Chicago Air Jordan. Uh, differences on there, real quick, just to show you, it's a Sky Jordan on the Wings logo there. So instead of Air, it's a Sky. And if you notice, the tongue tag is different as well. It's just Nike, there's no Air in these. So that was the key difference. Other than that, same shape, same materials, high quality, 85. Next up on the list, we have the 2017 Animal Pack 2.0. I wish they were the OGs, believe me. I would soul swap the absolute shit out of an OG pair and wear them to the ground because to me, the OGs are where it's at. Not that there's anything wrong with the 2.0. They did do a decent job on these. It's just something about the actual colors of that OG and the creamy white instead of the black. They just go so hard. If you haven't seen a pair of OGs, 
Google them, but trust me, pictures don't do them justice. In person, they're absolutely incredible. So this pair came out and in 2017, you got a variety of colors of laces. So there's green in here right now, but it came with red, it came with black, green, and I might be missing one color. Um, I just think the green kind of goes with the Nike Air logo on the back. But funny story about these, I got these on release in 2017. And in, I want to say, man, maybe the year after, it could have been 2017, whenever the Travis Scott fours came out, the blue hitters, some guy came up, I was doing a sneaker expo, and he said, do you want to trade your animal pack for my Travis Scott's? At the time, I hadn't even seen the Travis Scott four, and I was like, fuck, I'm, I mean, I gotta be honest with you, I don't really know even who Travis Scott is. I know that's gonna cause a lot of people to leave right now, but I apologize, I know who he is now. Uh, but anyway, I looked at the fours, I said, yeah, they're kind of dope, I'll trade you. So I traded those. I got the Travis Scott's home, and I was looking at them. They had kind of poor quality control on that particular release. So there was some glue on the suede or the new buck that kind of bothered me. I really hated the, the cut of the tongue as well on those. So I sold them, and I think I sold them for like 300 bucks. So that was a complete bust. Those things go for big money now. These have shot up a little bit too. Uh, I picked this pair up out of Japan in incredible condition. Box, OG all, um, I think they were like 240 bucks. So to me, that's actually the price that this, these should be. Um, you know, they're about 250 bucks, in my opinion, the value of them. Now, I think on StockX right now, they go for like 500 bucks dead stock. I'm curious why they go for that now when for the longest time, these were like 300 bucks all day long. Um, in comparison to the OG, they really don't compare in my opinion. I know a lot of people like the black coloring more than the white, but trust me, in person, those OGs go incredibly hard. The colors on the rest of it, on the OGs are actually different. To me, they're more vibrant. The problem is that price tag that the OGs come with. So currently, I wanna say a used pair will run you maybe 1200 bucks, 1300 bucks, and there's no way in hell I'm paying that for an Air Max that I'm gonna have to soul swap. I just don't believe in spending that much on sneakers. I know, I'm crazy. All right, next up, we have a pair of 2004 Nike Air Safari. So guys, these are absolutely, well, they're dead stock. I was gonna say they're perfect condition, but they're dead stock. I've never worn them. And the reason being, if you would wear these, this area right here will crumble to pieces after a few steps. So the plan with these is actually to swap an Air Max sole on them. I'm thinking maybe a 93 sole. Um, with an orange bubble. I think that would look really, really dope on these. Uh, what's to note on these, the coolest part about them is this texturing of the leather. It kind of almost has a wood grain. The materials on these are very premium. Um, these were copped in Japan. And to me, if you put orange laces on these with a 93 orange sole, you know, it'd be orange and white, maybe do the white in a cream color you would have a pair of absolute fire. But will I ever get around to doing that? Good, good question. I also hate to do that to a dead stock pair. That being said, it's not like there's a big demand for an Air Safari from 2004. So these will probably be sticking around for a while. If I can find that particular donor sole or a pair of a 93s and donor, um, I'm gonna buy them, I'll save them, we'll do it together. I'll do it for, for a, um, a video on the channel. And if you can come up with a better idea than a 93 sole, I'm all ears because I think these are pretty versatile. I think most Air Max soles will fit these pretty well. Little concerned with this area here, but there's only one way to find out if the, the swap's going to work, and that is to try it. Next up, we have, all right guys, this is gonna be a shocker, but to me, top three Air Maxes of all time. 
That's right, the 2017 Sean Witherspoon 97-1. So, what he did was he took a 97 upper, he put it on an Air Max 1 sole, and to me, it looks absolutely incredible. The materials on these age super well because I like stuff faded, I like stuff a little beat up, and this corduroy definitely looks like that in no time. Uh, some cool features of these, the tongues, this is Velcro, this comes off, you can swap these out. Uh, the laces, they came with a few different colors. I've actually never swapped the laces, but check out that insole. It's got that smiley face. Uh, a lot of people take the insoles out of these because they have a tendency of pulling down your socks. I think that insole is way too dope to take out. Um, to me, these are just a perfect execution. If you would say, all right, unlimited materials, unlimited sole swap ideas. I mean, look at the outsoles in these. Do your thing. I might come up with something. Well, I wouldn't be able to come up with it, but this is my, this is my shit. We'll just put it that way. Uh, so Sean Witherspoon recently, you know, he's he's come out with a couple other collaborations. The Asics were pretty dope. Uh, he's done Adidas now too. I think he actually did Adidas, or at least round two did back in the day, if I recall correctly, but I might have that mixed up. I think he did do some form of Adidas. Uh, if anybody knows, leave me a comment because I'm genuinely curious. Um, but these are definitely, to me, the shoe of the year in 2017. Um, top three of all time, but here's my concern with these. Number one, the price, absolutely insane now. I mean, crazy, crazy high for an Air Max. But what are we gonna do when these soles crumble? Because you know it's gonna happen. So what do we have, 10, 15 years in an Air Max? <sighs> There's no donor sole that matches up to here. The only thing you, you could do is attempt to separate the outsole from the midsole, which is harder than you think on an Air Max, and then do maybe a Nike ID with that color air bubble, paint them, glue it back together. That might work, but again, Pulling off the outsoles to, from the midsoles on Air Maxes is a job. It sucks to do. Uh, a lot of times the midsole will come apart when you do it. Um, there's just no easy way of doing it all together. So to me, these are a perfect execution. I mean, they fray when you wear them, which is incredibly dope. Not the most comfortable, but I mean, when you're stunting this hard, comfort's that's out of your mind. All right, guys, next up we have 1999 Air Jordan 14 Lows. And these UNCs I've had since they were brand new. I still recall the day I went in to get these and I saw them. So back in the day, they used to have these cases at the, like when you walked in the door and they would put shoes prior to the release in there. So I remember walking in, seeing these things and being like, holy sh, I mean, they. The 14s I loved at that time. So they were like 140 bucks or something. And I'm thinking to myself, that is worth that to me. So I'm talking to the, uh, the uh, employee there and he's like, dude, if you want a pair, I can sell you a pair. And I was like, I mean, you're never gonna have that happen now. So I actually had these early, I wore them to school and everybody was like, what are those, you know, because sneakerheads weren't as, as prevalent as they are now. Nobody had the internet, so it wasn't like anybody knew what releases were coming out. These were some head snappers. I took them, or I should say neck snappers, but I took them uh, about, I would say four years ago and restored them a little bit. All in all, I kept them in incredibly good condition though, like I always have. This was the very beginning of what turned me into an absolute sneaker fanatic. Um, I started off about a year prior to getting these and when the Jordan 13 was out. Guys, for somebody that was not allowed to have Jordan tennis shoes, Jordan sneakers, Jordan shirts, Jordan anything, up until my parents divorced, this was a big deal to get these. I mean, a huge, huge deal. 
when I wore these, I thought I was the absolute shit. Um, nowadays, you know, you spend 140 bucks on a pair of shoes. That means nothing to anybody. But back then, it was a big, big deal. Uh, the reason I like 14 so much is obviously because it's one of the shoes that really started this off for me. But number two is the really cool features that these things have, like the aglets being metal. These cool uh, vents in here for, um, I mean, there's like a little screen to vent your, your feet. Uh, this, which is reminiscent of the Ferrari prancing horse. I mean, 14s to me are underrated. You know, you gotta figure that's the last one. It's the last model that Jordan actually played in. It's nice. Still even have the box. How dope is that? So, you know, a lot of people ask me how I still have shoes that I wore in like eighth grade. The reason being, and this is what got me into the restoration, I kept things so meticulous. I would clean them after I wore them almost every time. Back then it was with a toothbrush. Um, I was just, I was nuts about them. If, if I saw like dirty or gringy sneakers, I would be like, not for me, can't do it. So this is what made you boy. Next up, we have another retro, the 2017 Bread Toe. All right, guys, let's talk about this particular shoe. When they first released the pictures of these, it's only been a few years ago. It feels like an eternity, though. I was like, holy shit, they're going back. I apologize for cussing so much in, in this collection video, by the way. Uh, but anyway, I was like, holy cow, look at the quality of that leather. Because in pictures, it looks quite phenomenal. I mean, it's got that great grain to it, especially in the white you see here. But then I got them in hand and I, I just was so disappointed. I said, what is this stuff? I mean, I, I, I don't know. It's, uh, they look great in pictures. They look great from a distance, but in hand, they just don't do a lot for me. Um, I don't know. I know I'm super weird about that stuff, super picky. But I'm curious, what do you guys think of these? I have no idea what they sell for these days, but to me, they're not worth a whole, whole lot. I mean, the colorway is cool. I really like them. Um, I don't like it as much as a black toe, but you cannot go wrong with this color blocking and this colorway. But again, that quality just doesn't do it for me. Obviously the shape sucks because this, you know, it's a retro from 2017, so enough said about that. Um, but I would bet you this is probably like a $500 sneaker at this point. Get out of here with that. That's insane. If you spend 500 bucks on these, we'll get you some up. Next up, we have the 2013 white cement three or the wc88 um you know obviously we've already gone through a 94 the 94 is definitely the way to go on these if you had the patience to soul swap them tab swap them but if you don't this is the model you have to get because nike air very very important um i do not mess with the ones with the jump man which has been basically every other year they've done these i just don't like when they mess that up I don't see the need for it. Jumpman belongs on shoes that have the Jumpman from the factory OG. These said Nike Air, let's keep it that way. Um, quality on these actually pretty decent. I mean, they're 2013, so that was a decent, well, it was, it was an okay air for quality. Um, you can wear these still today. These, the only thing I've really done to them was repaint the midsole, but other than that, these are still, you know, they're hanging tight. So uh, this is a pair really that I wear when I don't want to put miles on the 94s. I think we're overdue for a retro on these. And if Nike does them again with the current shape that they're going with with the three, that's going to be money. Please, please, Jordan brand, do that. Keep the, the shape that you showed us on the, um, what was it, the Tokyo Denims. Do that on this. You make me very happy. All right, guys, it's going to do it for this one. Please like, please subscribe. We'll be back at you with more. We've got a lot of good videos coming up. And 
I'm always curious what you guys think of the diversity of this. If you want to see more hype, you want to see, you know, there's plenty of channels for that. But if you want to see a good mix of everything with some true OG heat, we've got you covered. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.